Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 174 of the Sophie Art Podcast, which is a little podcast that I do about the art and things. <laughs> and little Dennis is with us today. And well, today we are looking at another little article, and this is an ickle lickle an ickle lickle article <laughs> from issue number 15 of the Character Design Quarterly magazine, which is one of my favourite issues. And this article is so cool. So this article we're looking at today is called Characterise This Angry Cloud with the artist Emma Cormary. And what, what we're doing on this one is she basically takes two words, which is angry and cloud, and she creates a character. And she talks about basically bringing a cloud to life based around the emotion of anger. This is brilliant. There's only a little one. So this one, well, I hope you enjoy this one. So little Dennis is with us today. He, he's cool, he is. And little Kitty's here as well. You can see, watch this on YouTube at youtube.com slash Sophie Lawson. But you don't really need to, because I'll hopefully be all right to talk about it and stuff. Really, I think we should just get into this one. <laughs> so little Dennis is going to get us into this. Let's, let's do it now. Boing! Little Kitty and Dennis kisses. That means it's time for for another little article so let's get into this one then so we are looking at an article from issue 15 of the character design quarterly magazine which is actually one of my favoriteest covers of any magazine i've got all book as well it's it's a little character from the artist bobby chi bobby cho and he's actually becoming one of my favorite artists i think but this article has another artist who i feel like in the future she might become one of my favorites as well so, so this article is a very little one. It's only on two pages and it's called Characterise This, Angry Cloud with the artist Emma Cormary. So basically what she does in this one is she takes two little words, in this case angry and cloud, and she creates a character and she talks through the process of bringing this, this little character to life based around the words. It's a simple, simple idea, but such a cool one. And I actually felt really inspired after this one. I felt really sort of excited. So I always feel like that's that's a good sign, that is. <laughs> but basically, it, before we get into this one, I thought we'd um, have a, look, a little look at the artist herself. So the artist, Emma Cormary, you can find her on Instagram at E-I-M-Q-O. And one of the things I thought about her, well, she her characters are brilliant. There's so much life in her characters. They they feel alive, and they're they're bursting with colour as well. She's got this amazing way of just using colour in a really fun way. So I thought that was brilliant. But she's also got a website which you can find at emmacormary.com, which is e m m a c o r m a r i e dot com but i'll put links and everything in the description but when i went when i first saw her website the first thing i thought i actually said out loud i like what i see here (laughs) but her artwork has got such a happy vibe it's very colorful and there's this sort of epicness about her artwork It's, it's brilliant it is it's got it's just brilliant so i highly recommend checking her artwork out like I said, I'll put links in the description and everything. But what I thought I'd do on this one is, I'd start by talking about my initial... Actually, I'm going to start by reading the intro to the article so we know what we're getting into. So this is what Emma says in her own words. She says, I'm going to show you how a character can be created from two simple words. In this case, angry and cloud. First, it is important to define what each word suggests separately then you can combine these words, these characteristics, to create a a unique design. When the different elements are pulled together, they create an entirely new story. Now what I love about this is, it's so simple. All you've got to do is come up with two words, and, well, this this is, for me, come up with an emotion, and come up with an object, and then put them together. So the first thing, you've got to do some writing to work out what those words mean and then all we've got to do is just put those 
together to create a character. So I, th I thought to myself, this would make a really good drawing exercise. All you've got to do is, you say you've got five minutes, and all you've got to do is think of an emotion, think of an object, and then just come up with some characters for it. I, I thought it would be a really good drawing exercise for like letting, letting go and also sort of practicing creativity, I suppose. So the first thing I thought when I looked at this character, what we've got is a, we've got a cloud, a very simple little cloud, <laughs> but he looks really, really peed off, which is brilliant. He looks very angry, as if he's about to explode with anger. And there's all lightning everywhere. There's like steam coming out of his nose, and he's also got red eyes. But my, my initial thought was, there's lots of character in this simple shape, because it's a simple cloud shape. So it's so simple, but it's really bursting with with character. I also thought there was really nice shapes. And there's also like a bit of humour, which I thought was brilliant. Because even though this character is angry, which normally angry is serious and aggressive, somehow Emma's got a bit of um, fun in this one. So it, I like that. Even though it's angry, it's still, still got like the humour. And I thought to myself, how is she getting humour in here? She's getting humour with the nose steam coming out the nose, <laughs> which is very funny, but it's like over the top. And then the facial expression, because he, he just looks, he looks, he's, he looks mad, he does. Also notice that there's a very simple colour palette. All we've got really is white, grey, black, red, and a tiny little bit of brown. But really it's just white and grey. And then again, simple design, but there's lots of detail here with like the lightning and stuff. And textures she talks about this in a minute so that was what I thought but that's that was my initial reaction to the to the image without without reading anything so let's get into this one then so the first thing is this article is broken into five main bits the first thing is it's called getting emotional then she starts talking so the first bit is just talking about how she sort of gets some of the emotion of anger into the into the character she then starts talking about texture. She then starts talking about, well, the, the boiling, the the nose, the steam coming out the nose, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. She then starts talking about the lightning. That's brilliant, that bit. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then she talks, well, the, that bit was talking about, like, the, the, the veins of the character. What she does is, the veins of the character, she makes them look like lightning. And then she's also got lightning coming out of the character which is the final final bit. So that's brilliant. For me that was brilliant because the whole thing comes together because you've got you've got the same sort of lines on the on the background as you have with the character. Which I thought was cool. So for the intro when she said she when she said I'm going to show you how how a character can be created from two simple words. In this case angry angry and cloud. The first thing I thought to myself was, this reminds me of a drawing exercise. So in episode 170, I looked at an article called 15 Tips for Better Character Design with David Mellon. And I've actually started calling that exercise story drawing. My mum came up with that because I, I sat there practicing this little drawing exercise. And my mum says, my mum said story drawing. And I like I liked that. So this... I'm now I'm going to call this story drawing. So all you do is you you sit down with a blank piece of paper. You got like 10 10 minutes and what you do is without thinking about it you've got to come up with a character. Just the first thing that comes to your head. But you're not allowed to you're not allowed to go into it knowing what you're going to do. So for me for one of them for one of them I came up with a I came up with a character snail on wheels. <laughs> and then you've got to come up with a story as well from the top of your head. So I came up with a character, Snail with Wheels, and then the story was he's trying to get he's trying to go home. And all you've got to do is you set the timer and you've just got to basically see what happens really. Because the thing is you don't know what's happening here. This story, you've got no idea what the story's doing. But what happens is well, this is what I love. The story somehow it just flows out of you. 
and you, I, I sort of think to myself, where is that coming from? Because I had no idea. I had no idea about any of that. And the thing is, I feel like the same thing would would happen here. So all you've got to do is think to yourself, think of an emotion, think of an object, and see what happens. And I have the same sort of feeling that a character will come out of it. But so what I think to myself is, who's creating these characters? Are we actually creating these characters, or is or is something? Are we just sort of? Are we sort of like just bringing a character to life? Because in a way, we're not conscious. I don't feel like sometimes, sometimes I feel like we're not conscious of what we're drawing. So it's weird, that is. But from my little, from my little notes that I took from this intro was. First, she de- she defines what each word suggests separately. Then she combines them to create a unique design. I like that. So instead, because if you, I thought to myself, if if you sort of think to yourself, angry cloud, what is that? The, you, I feel like you'd be too tempted to jump to creating character. Whereas if you say, what does the word angry mean? List that down. What does the word cloud mean? You're kind of well, angry. You're going to come up with like aggressive. I would I would think of like um, zigzags and and angles and red <laughs> and then for the word cloud I'd come up with fluffy so you've now got two opposites here you've got like angry which mm-hmm. is like the triangular and then cloud which is like fluffy so so I like that I like that I like the way she she done that you you do it separately and then put it together. And and I thought to myself, this is a bit like another article I looked at, where it, this was, when was this one? This was quite a long time ago now. Probably, I think the artist was called Bryn, I'm not sure. It was one when they were creating a, a character from the imagination. And what they did was, they created a unique character by taking two real-life characters or animals. Like, for instance, you take, say, a crocodile and a dog. And what you do is, you you pick the... The best bits of a crocodile, the best bits of a dog, and you squash them together to create a unique character. I felt like it was a bit like the same. I was getting the same sort of vibe. So again, what what I feel like is happening here is you're getting all these ways that you can come up with characters, and you start realizing it's endless. You could sit here for the rest of your life coming up with characters just by thinking of an emotion and combining it with a word, with an object. It's the same thing with this. The ima- imagine the amount of animals that exist. Imagine the amount of combinations of combining animals together. Is I feel like it's almost never ending. So in a weird way, there's sort of no excuse really to not have an idea for a character. So it, if you're ever stuck with a coming up, coming up with a character, all you got to do really is think. Hang on, think of two animals and squish them together. And then, and that might lead to something else. I thought that was cool. They create an entirely new story. She she says she uses the word story. I love that because already she's now thinking about the character as she's thinking about a story. So it's not just a character. It's actually there's a story behind it. Which now that makes for me that word story is what is what creates the fun. Because you sort of think to yourself, why is he angry? What is about to happen? That's what I want to know. And that's that's sort of a a story thing there. Why is he angry? What's happened to him? <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, this also reminded me of Austin Cleon in his book, Steal Like an Artist. Nothing is orig- original, but it is. What he said was, he said something like, that book was brilliant, that was, but what he, he said something like, nothing is original. So basically, if you come up with an idea for something... Somebody's already done it. That's what he was talking about. But what you want to do is pick the best bits of what everyone else has done and create your unique thing. So again, I was sort of feeling like the same thing here. It's about it's about combining. The other thing is, imagine say fifty artists sit down with this, the word angry in cloud. Imagine fifty artists sit down to do this. I imagine we would all come up with completely different characters. And also, I'd also imagine your sort of mood would would affect it as well. So if you're sitting down to do this and you're a bit cheesed off yourself, you're probably going to come up with a completely different character than if you were in a much more relaxed state. 
because if 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 I sat down to do this and I was feeling like relaxed, I would imagine I'd do a lot more fluffiness. Whereas if I was angry, I'd probably be scratching away. <laughs> so it's quite weird how things like that happen. I think that was it for the first bit. So the next bit was called getting emotional. So what we've got what we've got here is we in the article we get a well this article is brilliant. All you've got is basically one side is black, the other side is white. Again, like the opposites of like the opposites of like angles and like clouds. Because really, those two words, ang angry and cloud, they shouldn't really go together. I don't think. You would think of a cloud as being soft and happy. So I, I quite like that, and the article sort of reflects that in in the colours. Well, what we get is we get four little squares which highlights the thing she's talking about and then we also get the final image on one page so the first bit's called getting emotional so my initial thoughts before i even read anything was emotion is in the eyes and i thought exaggeration as well because when i when you this little image you got all you really see is two eyes and they're red and the eyes look really angry so i thought to myself emotion is in the eyes and then the exaggeration is like the nose is pushed right up and the eyes are sort of there's a lot of tension in those eyes <laughs> it's quite cool so for this one this is what she says in order for a cloud to portray this happy this human emotion we need to give him human features so already she's turned this cloud into like a a, a human which makes it like relatable because we're humans. <laughs> she says, it's a good idea to use your own reflection for reference when conveying an emotion. Her anger, the nostrils are flared, the eyes red and glaring, the mouth distorted and the face wrinkled. These characteristics help sell the emotion, even in a cloud. So in my notes I said, she turns the cloud into a human. So the features of a human, but it still looks like a cloud. So... I like, I like that. And then I thought to myself, well, that makes it relatable. Because we're humans, we can sort of relate to it a lot more. Which means that we're going to feel the emotion. Angry equals a human emotion. And I thought, I thought to myself, do animals get angry? They must do, mustn't they? I wonder if um, other things get angry. But then you start thinking, like, emotions, are they sort of a human thing or not? not sure use your use your own reference for use your own reflection for reference that was also in a previous article we looked at as well this bloke was there was a i remember a page of just him looking <laughs> pulling these funny faces of different emotions and then he, he was basically turning them into characters i love that because it basically means any emotion we can we can capture it in our own face so we don't have to go looking online for hours trying to find find an emotion we can actually do it ourselves. and also because we're doing it ourselves, we're going to put ourselves into the character and feel it a lot more which i thought was cool so when she talked about the word anger she said about flared nostrils red eyes glaring eyes distorted mouth and wrinkled face so what i liked about that was she simplified it she's been what she's done is i reckon when she started this, she thought, anger, what does that mean to me? And she's probably thought, right, it's going to be a character, so what emotions? And then she's, that's probably the words she listed. And then she's put that into her character. But the thing is, she keeps remembering her keywords. So again, that, that goes on about this thing. I often wonder, because they say about starting with writing, it all starts with writing. That's what Sean McCabe said at seanwest.com. He basically, he always, he always said about how important it was to start with writing. And a lot of these articles, when they're designing characters, they're actually, they start by writing. So you sort of know what you're doing before you've even started drawing. So I like that. And then I've also put here, everything has a story slash gesture. How cool is that? Even these little lightning strikes from the character, they've got a story about them. I thought I liked that bit. The next bit, I like this bit as well. It's called texturing. And what we've got here is, we've got 
it zo- the article zooms in on the side of the cloud and we see little bits of texture. So we see the sort of texture that the that Emma's using. What did I put up for it? So the first thing I thought before reading anything, my initial thoughts was, I thought to myself, edges equals texture. So the texture is only on the edge. This also is something that Jake Parker said about in one of his courses at SPS Learn. He said, if you're trying to if you're trying to do a texture or something, you don't have to spend hours putting the texture across the entire thing. You only have to put the texture on the edges. So in the example, what he did was he created a cube, and it wanted he wanted it to be like fluffy, as if it was like like made a cloud, I suppose. And what he did was instead of putting fluffiness all over it. Well, actually, let's make one of fur. He did one of fur. Instead of putting the texture of fur all over the cube, which would have took hours, what he did was he put the texture of the cube on the edging of the cube, and the rest of it, he left it blank. And what it did was it, it like hinted at the texture without actually doing it all over. So not only does that save you a lot of time, it makes it more exciting for the, for the viewer as well, because they feel like... They feel like they're pie- piecing it together. <laughs> this is cool. And I, I thought, ah, oh, she's done that here, look. So texture's on the edges. And I thought to myself, there's a mixture of, of texture and no texture. It's like a balance there. Also thought it's very subtle. There's, there's not much texture, but there's just enough for it to be exciting, I suppose. And then also I put the word ziggies. So we've got these like little ziggies, little ziggy zags. And I thought, well, ziggies is anger. And I thought, how mad is this? There's even a texture in anger. <laughs> so it's not just like shapes that have texture or line. It's actually emotions as well. There's different textures that relate to emotions. So I thought, I like that. So... So in my little notes, I've I've put, this is when I was reading the article, I've put texture equals more appealing and real. I've also put, she uses the word play. I love it when they do that. Because I think to myself, if they're they're using the word play, they're obviously having fun. And again, like I said, when I looked at this character, I saw a bit of humour in it. So I feel like the humour's in there because she was enjoying herself. And I've put, she's exploring textures to find one that equals anger. I like that as well. So when she's talking about playing, she was saying about how she was trying out different textures. So she didn't go with her first one. But I, I like that, she's exploring. Again, like what I said before, when you're cr- like creating characters, sometimes you're not the one creating them. It's almost like they are... It's almost like the character comes to life and you don't even know what, what you, what's going to happen. It's the same sort of thing here, like she's, the texture is going to come to her. She's sort of like waiting for the texture to feel right, I suppose. And then she, so what she's got is, she's got the cloud, the edge of the cloud has got these little speckles, which she called like a grainy texture. And she says this emphasises the unpredictable nature of anger. How cool is that? So again, even in textures, she's thinking about the word anger. So she's mindful of, she's mindful of the emotion, the whole thing, which I thought I liked that. The next one, this is cool, this one. So this one here is called Boiling Over. Boiling Over. And what we've got here is it zooms in on the, the cloud's nose. We've got like steam coming out the nose. <laughs> this is, so this is what I said in my initial notes before I read anything. I put, this made me laugh. It still does. Yeah, it makes me laugh. And I've put, this is the humour part for me. So so for me, that is where the humour is. The humour is in that action of him blowing steam out his nose. I put, boiling equals anger. Steam equals about to pop. So that's what I thought. I thought, anger is like boiling. Pop. <laughs> All comes together. Red and boiling equals fire. That's what I thought. And they say, like, anger, if you've got an angry emotion, it's like a fiery temperament. So I think, I thought to myself, it's like fire, yeah? Red steam 
relates to that. So when I actually went through the article, uh, I'll read the article, this is what she said. The emotion anger could be shown on many different levels, but I decide the cloud is angry to the point of steaming. Steam is blown out of his nose like a bull. He's, he's brewing a storm. I thought to myself, well, that's the story there. He's brewing a storm. He's about to pop. So I, I thought, well, I want to know what's going to happen. What's going to happen when he does pop? And also, what has made him pop? I like that. And she's also said, this is a common used signifier of anger in cartoons and reflects the grainy texture used for the cloud's body. How cool is that? So she's thinking about everything here. So in my little notes I've put, I've put, she even uses cloud words to describe the cloud's emotion. Yeah, brewing a storm. So I thought, well, what do clouds do? Clouds have, they create a storm. So I thought, how brilliant is that? She, she's using the, the phrase brewing a storm <laughs> for anger and the cloud. I like that. It's, I thought I, I like that. I've put steam from the nose equals, that's what she said. So, oh, she said, I put steam from the nose equals commonly used in cartoons to signify anger. And I thought, well, that's over the top. So over the top, that's what creates fun. She reflects the grainy texture used for the cloud's body. And uh, the, when I first wrote that, I thought, I don't understand this bit. So then I, I sort of I sat with myself and I thought, well, hang on, what, what does that mean? Because what she said was, she says, she says, the, re, she says the, the steam reflects the grainy texture used for the cloud's body. I didn't understand that. And then I thought to myself, grainy equals unpredictable nature of anger. And I thought, steam blowing out of a nose equals about to blow. And I've realised they're both unpredictable. So the graininess, unpredictable nature of anger, steam about, so it's about to blow. So if it's about to blow, you don't know what's going to happen. So I thought, well, that's it then. That's what, that's what the same thing is. It's unpredictable. And that's obviously what anger is. Yeah, she's bringing the whole design together to create anger. Anger, angry is unpredictable. Because when you're angry, you don't think straight. You sort of, yeah, you, you just react. You react. You don't sort of focus and think. So that that's one of the things with anger there. When is the cloud going to pop? <laughs> that's what I thought. I like that. I really like, I feel like that was very, for me, that was very insightful, that bit. The next bit is called Thunderous Fanes. And what, what happens here is the article zooms in on the the veins of the character. So the cloud has got these little veins on him, which look very much like the lightning that are coming out of him, which is the final bit. But my initial thoughts when I saw this bit was, initially, yeah, it looks like lightning. And then I thought, again, like a cloud. Lightning comes out of the cloud, so the veins look like lightning. Angles and straights equals aggressive, which is anger. So, in these little veins, they're very, they're very angular and aggressive, which I thought is like the word anger. But the other thing was, even though they're angular, I still thought they're very fun shapes. They are somehow they're still fun, which is I thought it was cool. So in my little notes, I put storm theme so would she still she still feel she's still sort of going with this storm theme which i i love i love that bring storm into the character's body yeah so basically now what we've got here is the storm is part of the character which brings the background and the character together because she could have just gone with a completely different type of texture and style for their veins yeah out and in it equals the same so the the out equals thunder in equals veins but they're the same lines the, the only difference is on the outside the lines are dark lines on a white background and on the inside on the character they're white lines on a dark character 
that actually reminded me of something when was it probably about a year or two ago i was sat down by the river watching the watching the seagull flying around in the sky and what i noticed was the seagull was both light and it was both light and dark at the same time because if the seagull i watched the seagull flying above the tops of the trees he was going above the tree like in the sky and then he'd go into the trees and what i noticed was when the seagull was on the sky he was light on dark no he wasn't he was dark on light because the back the sky was like a light blue so the seagull looked dark and then what happened was what if the seagull then flew in front of a tree because the tree was very dark suddenly the seagull became light and then when it went back to the sky again it, it went it went back to being dark on light and i thought how amazing is this that seagull is both light and dark at the same time. It depends on the background whether the thing is light or dark or not. I thought was, I like that. <laughs> and also, what I, what she's done here is there's unity here. Yeah, because because she uses the same lines for the veins and for the thunder. There's like a unity between the between the, the, the foreground and the background. Which I thought, I thought was cool. I put, yeah, this is quite weird, this is. F for me, it's like the black lines is the character breathing out. So the character breathing out is creating the black lines of the thunder. The character breathing in is creating the white lines of the veins. I don't know why I thought that, but that's what I thought. And it, it's, it's almost like... It's almost like those white lines is the character about to blow. And then the black is it expressing that that emotion. That's what I thought. Into the final bit now. So the final bit is called Lightning Strikes. So my initial thought was lovely design. <laughs> it's very simple. Very simple. I also, as I sort of looked at this in a bit more detail, I noticed there was like a triangle coming out of the nose. I don't know if that's significant or not, but I, I just noticed that. But again, I, I feel like that probably pulls you into the nose. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's like that. So you look at it and you're, you're pulled into the nose, almost as if you're getting pulled into his nostrils, about to get blown out yourself. <laughs> that's quite cool, that. I wonder if she consciously thought about that. The background and the, and the foreground feels united. Again, because of these, because of the same lines, it's, it's detailed but very simple. Again, I love it when that happens. I love it when you get these opposites together. It's cool. And I put here, so I, I put. I want to see what happens. I want to see what happens when he pops, which again goes back to that thing at the start about the story. That's the story. It's also the curiosity. Which is what they've been talking about in these other articles. If you can have the, if you can have the viewer, being curious, you, you're going to get them hooked. Because if there if there was another page to this article, I'd I'd be turning over to see what's going to happen. But you're left wondering. You're left wondering here, which I suppose that's quite good as well. <laughs> Did you hear that? So in, when I went through the little little bit of the article in my notes i've put bolts of lightning equals classic symbol of violent rage so again she's thinking about the anger so if, if this had been if the word had been say i don't know wet cloud she probably wouldn't have put lightning she would have had loads of rain coming out i've also put yeah she said adds dynamism to the character Helps the cloud appear overflowing with anger. Oh, this was brilliant. Listen to this, look. I'll read the little bit of the thing, look. Yeah, she says, this, this adds some dynamism to the character and helps our cloud appear overflowing with anger. She said, our cloud. Almost like it's our little friend. She didn't just say, helps the cloud. Our cloud. So all of a sudden now, I sort of, that word R, it makes me sort of care for this cloud a little bit more. It's almost like it almost, she sees the cloud more as like a little creature. 
that she's created. Yeah, it, it made me go, ah, oh. <laughs> like it made me think, oh, I like that. And then I thought the final thing I put was he is a little character. Yeah, he is a little character. So he's a little cloud, but he's a character. That's basically it. So in, in the takeaways, this is what I put in my little takeaways. I've put, I like how the article is set out. Oh, this was brilliant. This is, this is amazing to me. So this article is all about anger and thunder, stuff like that. What they've done in the article is they put a lightning bolt into the actual page design. So there's an actual lightning bolt in the page design. I thought it was brilliant. And it sort of, it, it takes you into the images as well. Lots of overlap with previous articles. Yeah, there was a lot of that. There's lots of times where I kept thinking, ah, this is what they said in the other articles. So you start noticing these sort of common themes about creating characters. I've also put, well, I put, I put the keywords flow throughout and then I scrubbed out the word keywords and put emotion. So the emotion flows throughout, which is anger. So the word anger, angry, it flows throughout the whole thing in the shapes, the texture and the expressions. So again, I feel like she very she was constantly reminding herself of the word angry to make sure the character fit the thing. All little details are related to cloud. Re yeah, she really thought about this design and kept it to the two words. I love that. All the little details are related to the cloud. Like, for instance, the veins looking like the shapes of lightning. That's brilliant. Little things again. That's what I have to keep noticing. Little things are, are powerful. It's cool. Mindful of keywords throughout the process. I can tell that. And then uh, the final thing I've put in my takeaways is angry but still fun, which I love that as well. I really do like that. The fact that you can have a character be filled with anger and aggression, but still be fun. Don't wake Kitty up, Dennis. <laughs> Bleed now, yeah, that bit hard. But that means it's the end of this one. I really hope you did enjoy that. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was brilliant. Such a cool... What I like about this is it's such a cool character and it's so simple. And it sort of inspires me. It makes me want to go and do it myself. <laughs> Which I think that's always a good sign. If you sort of come away from an article excited to try it yourself. I think that's what the main thing is really. So that's it for this one. Like I said you can find show notes and think at sophielawson.com Little Dennis will be there. He'll help you. And also you can watch it on YouTube at youtube.com slash sophielawson. And also this week, well today, when this podcast goes out. August the 1st, I'm actually going to be starting studying from Procreate. I'm going to be studying from a book called Beginner's Guide to Digital Painting in Procreate. How to Create Art on an iPad <laughs> by the 3D Toto Publishing. I can't wait for this. So what I'm going to do is each week I'm going to make a little, a tiny little blog post which will be on the website. And I'm also going to do a little video which I'll embed into the blog post and put it on YouTube. And I'm just going to talk about things I'm learning. Like, basically, my little journey, really, of going learning Procreate. Because I've been wanting to learn Procreate for about probably two years now. And the time has finally come. And I'm really excited for that. So I might actually start bringing little bits of that into the podcast as well in future episodes. But that's it for this one. All that's left is this week's little inspirational quote. <laughs> and it's cool. This one's brilliant. So this one goes to the artist Emma Cormary, who did this little article. And this one's so cool. This is, listen to this, look. It's a good idea to use your own reflection for reference when conveying an emotion. What I like about that is, you're, you're now putting yourself into the character. So, so it's a lot more personal. And also, you don't really... You, you don't really it's like when they say about drawing your hand. One of the reasons they say when you're studying 
they say draw your hand is because as long as you've got hands you've always got something to draw so it's like you don't have to go looking for things and what i like about that is no matter what emotion you, you're trying to draw all you got to do is get a mirror and, and and feel the emotion it's like what i said about when like what i do is when i draw little sophies on a lot of them are based off of me photos <laughs> where i've actually been posing so what happens is as i'm drawing little sophie because I've done the pose myself and put myself into the pose, somehow, I don't know how, but it, it sort of comes out in your character. So that's the same thing here. Like emotion is such an important thing that if, if you can actually feel it as you're drawing it, you, your character is going to be bursting with emotion. And I think if you've got a character bursting with emotion, very much like this cloud, it just it creates much more of a character. So I'm thinking maybe emotion is the key t to like a, a really sort of c believable, cool character. And then we've got story. So story is probably just a collection of emotions and conflicts and things like that. And then uh, emotion is linked to the characters. So you've got a collection of characters feeling emotions, which creates a story which you care about. And the good thing is if you put yourself into all of these little characters with, with your reflection each that means the story is going to be even more in a weird way what's weird about this is it's almost like you are you are the character how weird is that <laughs> it's quite cool so this week's little inspirational quote it's a good idea to use your own reflection for reference when conveying an emotion emma call mary Yeah. <laughs> 